Well, welcome back to my channel, Mispronounced Adventures, and this video is going to be a more advanced look at the Serbo GX and the Touch 70, and it's a sponsored video with 12 Volt Planet, who kindly sent me those units. So last time I showed the Victron VRM, or the Victron Remote Monitoring, uh, running on the Serbo, and how it's great for viewing all your statistics and getting all the information about your electrical system in your vehicle, or any other particular setup you have for it. Um, both locally and remotely and this time I'm going to be looking at going a bit more advanced and going past just using it for monitoring and have it do a few different things using a few of the features. So let's get into it. So a few plans for this Serbo GX video. I'm going to use the relay to run a solar dump load uh, which means when the battery is fully charged opposed to stop taking in solar energy be that well be that from the solar or be that from the alternator uh, and the DC to DC charges and stop charging the battery it will automatically turn on a hot water heater and feed effectively into that so getting hot water for free off excess or un otherwise unyielded energy. I'm also going to install some custom GUI mods on the Touch 70 or the screen. Um, so on this particular e interface here, I can view uh, all of my temperature probes and all my temperature information on the main screen. So I don't have to go flick through different menus. So just on here along the bottom, we'll have my temperatures uh, and that whole mod will be able to do lots and lots of different things as well it's quite a powerful mod right first off is i'm going to install the gui mod so i can get my temperatures and then maybe a few other things um, changing on the ui so most things i'm going to say here are a reiteration of this guy's really helpful 40 minute video on installing uh, the GIO mods and uh, it's called Phil's Camping and Touring so most things I'm going to say here are information I learned off watching his video. I'll put links to the github in the description for the video. So on the github uh, we're going to download setup helper and this is going to manage all the mods including the GUI mods we're going to install. But well, download what it says you should need to download which I've already done and then paste it onto a freshly formatted USB uh, formatted in FAT32 and download the package don't unzip the package and just put it straight on there next up to install it it's you just insert the usb and reboot it twice so you can only reset it in the data usbs the third one near the hdmi is a power usb so i'm just going to take out my extra bluetooth dongle usb in and i'm just going to go to menu settings general reboot it's going to reboot the system rebooting might take a little moment so first reboot done, wait for all the kit to show up. It is to still be all working. So now it said back to menu, settings, general, reboot a second time. Wait for it to finish booting up. Remove the USB stick. And the very bottom below uh, IO there is now a packet manager. So that's all installed now. Well, that's the, the packet manager, which is gonna manage the G you set up for us. You're in Packet Manager, hit Inactive Packages, find GUI mod, and then proceed to add the mod. Hit Active Packages. So you've got a few options there. You've got what version's currently on the GitHub, what version is stored locally, but not installed on the Serbo, and the version installed. Um, so we're gonna update Setup Helper. Go install, double tap install, install helper. So that's all done. Right, so now we're gonna go to the mods. We're gonna download the latest GUI mod. We're gonna to proceed to download it. So it's finished downloading, and now we're gonna install the latest mod, and we're gonna proceed. We're gonna restart the device, because it needs to restart. Right, so that's now put our settings at the top, which is actually one of the mods itself. So if we go back to the menu, Oh, so it's already got a few things activated uh, and all of this can be played with. So we're going to probably have a bit of a play and turn a few things on and off. So settings and then it is in device and language. And then there's a new tab called GUI mods. And we can start playing around with things in there. Flow overview, simple. Victron stock, what does that do? So now you can go back to your normal one. Or if we want, what's that one do? Different layout. So you can now get additional information if you just click on each of your individual things as well. And there's all your updated information. Just going to change the outside one to a different um, 
type, post like a generic. Let's change it to fridge or something. And there we go, now we've got more information on what's going on here. This is quite annoying though, I'd rather small text. Let's see if we can modify that. So the temperature information that the GUI mods can show can be from a variety of different places. I've got the review tags, which are my Bluetooth uh, tags. I've got the Victron BMV712 or the Smart Shunt's battery temperature. That's showing up on there as well. That you can turn off in settings if you don't want to display the battery temperature on that screen. And I've also got the GX temperature sensor or the MultiPlus temperature sensor, which is a physically wired into the servo, also displaying up in there. So it is showing all of them. And if you do want to show your tank sensors, uh, there'll be a second row beneath that one where you'll be able to view all your tank sensors. Lots of other new features. Uh, you can now click on the battery and get information like that. Same if the inverter was turned on or the solar is on. You can get lots more information you couldn't get before. You've also got some enhancements and changes to some of the other normal pages you have access to. Relay pages and some of your normal ones as well. Something I got asked in the last video was how do I have DC systems? So this isn't anything to do with the GUI mod. Um, but DC system is turned on and accessed by settings, system setup, and then DC system here. And that gives you the DC box. The DC box is going to be everything which is not accounted for by what the inverter is doing and what the solar is doing. So it can either show, for instance, all my lights are on at the moment and the fridge is on, or vice versa, it will also show charging from the B2B chargers as well. And I've just turned the engine on, so now both the battery battery chargers are currently running. And you can see it's a minus uh, watts because it's charging. So some of the other features that you can use the USB ports for is you could use a USB hub. Um, and this is just an extension cable to a USB hub I have hiding down in the Victron cupboard with all the kit. So all of the different units are connected to a hub and it all goes through one USB. You could also have a USB GPS dongle, which is what I use. I think I paid about £15 for it on Amazon. And it's one which is designed to work with Raspberry Pi and or Linux based um, operating systems. And that's sort of what works on the servo. And that was just plug or play. And it just found it first time, turn it on, and it shows up in the VRM forever more afterwards. Another option is you can use Bluetooth dongles. So if your Bluetooth um, temperature tags like mine are a little bit too far away from the unit itself to get it, to pick it up on the onboard Bluetooth, you can also put a dongle on. Uh, I'm just going to put it straight in there because I've still got it spare. You could run a USB extension lead towards a more centralised bit of your vehicle and then put a dongle in the end of it. I've just got the dongle spare now, so I'm just going to put it in there. And then you can find that in the settings on the screen. One of my features I want to use is someone to modify my current solar dump load. So let me just quickly explain what a solar dump load is. I found early on that about 11 o'clock in the morning in the summer, my batteries are fully charged from solar, which meant I had or I meant I was missing out on maybe eight hours of potential power. So I have a hot water element inside my hot tank and that automatically turns on when the batteries are almost full um, to stop the charger going from bulk into float mode. As opposed to charging the batteries, it's just using that power to heat the water. And then there's also a voltage turnoff point that if the clouds came over or became nighttime, it would only ever drop the batteries down to 95% or so. Uh, but that was using voltage and that wasn't the most accurate way of triggering it. And because I'm using the servo now, I have access to state of charge, so I can have a particular percentage turn on and off the hot water element. And that also functions if the batteries become fully charged from the MultiPlus running when I'm on electrical hookup, or if the B2Bs charge the batteries from when I'm driving. So I'm going to be using the start-stop generator feature, um, because that's the only relay on the servo where you can control the on-off of that relay via state of charge. However, I'm going to be using it with um, inverse logic. So the on command is actually going to be the off command and the off command is going to be my on command in a generator context. So dump load software side, under relay we've turned on relay function one and we've put it to the generator start stop. And then go out of relay section into generator start stop. State of is running by SOC conditions, so down to the bottom settings, conditions, and then we're using, you have lots of options, but I'm using battery state of charge, and this is more or less the numbers I've got set at the minute, 
Uh, remember that it's almost, it's kind of using inverse logic. So the stop is actually the starting and the start is the stopping. Um, so the hot water heater is turning on when it goes above 97%. And all these quiet hour values that you can set quiet hours. And then what's going to happen is the element is going to turn off if the battery set of charge dropped below 94%. It shouldn't drop below, or it's only going to drop below if the clouds come over and it's turned on, or it becomes nighttime. And then the hot water heater would still be on, and then if it drops 1 or 2%, it's going to then turn it off so you don't flatten your battery. Because I'm using inverse logic, when the generator is on, which is actually the element itself being off because I'm using inverse logic. Uh, Any time the element is off, it counts as runtime on the generator. Unfortunately, I am using the generator start start feature in reverse and Victron don't have at the moment a dump load sort of feature where it would hope make a lot more sense. Who knows, maybe one day. And on the hardware side, we have a 12 volt signal going into common and coming out of normally closed. The signal which is going in to the relay is up here, so I could have it turned on and off as I want, mainly for maintenance or if I was cleaning the tank out or I wasn't going to be in the van for a while, I could turn it off up here so it didn't automatically come on. And when that relay turns on, that activates this temperature relay, which will then go, is my current temperature below my target temperature, which is what you want your water to get up to, and if it's no, it then turns on the relay on there which will then power this larger relay, which is actually what's turning the element on and off. Something I didn't mention as well is while this is a solar dump load, if any criteria have the batteries reaching 95%, it's gonna turn on the solar dump load or the dump load. Um, so the idea that when I'm driving, I've got a 65 amps worth of charge coming in from the Orion B2Bs. If I'm driving, get fully charged batteries, that will also turn the hot water heater on and start heating the water with the same idea. Um, so I'm utilising unused potential driving time uh, to heat the water and unused solar. I found on my previous testing for that 18 litre hot water tank, which has usually got about 15 litres in, it takes around, I think it was about, it was about an hour and a half to hit 60 degrees from about 15. So next up, uh, whilst the temperature of the water is based here, uh, but I can't see that remotely. So I've got a spare temperature sensor from my Multi Plus or the GX sensor. So these just can be plugged directly into the servo by the little things it comes with. And I can then get this temperature. So this may look like a lug, um, but really it's just a temperature sensor inside a lug and then it's meant to be mounted to a battery. But this lug is apart from just being a physical device to hold it to a battery, it's not doing anything. I am going to make this waterproof because I don't know if it's waterproof already and put this in the hot tank. So it means I got a way to measure my hot water. So that's the hot water tank, and here's the, my attempt at a waterproof probe. So that's the Multi Plus's temperature probe, uh, covered in bathroom sealant, then covered in heat shrink, uh, and then heat shrinked, and then zip tied, and then covered in bathroom sealant again, and then a big bit of heat shrink, and heat shrink and zip tied. So it should be reasonably waterproof. I mean, it might be waterproof in the first place, but so we get put it in the tank, and then run the cables through uh, some just little holes under there where the other temperature probes go. Cable all run, I'll tidy up all the zip ties later on. But now I can put this in here, if I can find it, there we go. And I go to IO, analog inputs, tank, temperature sensor one. Turn that on, menu, there we go, hot water. Tank sensor wise, unfortunately, I don't really have any tank sensors at the minute to be able to show you. If I do get some in the future, I'll do a video update on how uh, they've worked, but it should be pretty simple. Um, just like the temperature sensors, it's almost plug and play. And that is pretty much going to end the video here. Um, I think for me, I showed the main use I get out of having the relay, um, which is gonna be the solar dump load, which is a system I've used the more rudimentary version in the van for last year now, and that's gives me hot water every day during the summer for free. Uh, for me, the GUI mods is the particular point I wanted. Uh, having a physical screen, I wanted all the information in one single screen. And that GUI mods is always getting updated and new features as well. Big thanks to 12 Volt Planet for sending me the Touch 70. 
and the Servo GX itself. I think it's a great unit uh, and a powerful way to run the VRM if you want something to just plug or play. If you want to check out the first video of this little series, um, it tells you about the Victron remote monitoring system and how that all works, both on these versions and the Raspberry Pi. If you want one of them yourself, check out the 12 Volt Planet website, which is in the description down below. And that's going to be it for me. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Cheers. Bye.